Hello everyone, my name is Lily and I'm the creative director here at Bubblegum Cartoons and today I'm going to be doing the most requested video probably ever. I'm going to be doing an introduction to animating on Toon Boom. Now this tutorial is perfect for you if you've never touched an animation program before. We're going to do really easy, just start at the beginning. Um, so yeah, definitely follow along. I use uh, Toon Boom Harmony Advance. It's kind of like the medium version. There's an easy medium and then like an extreme version. So I picked the middle one because um, I wanted to make sure I got a good quality program without, you know, having all these bells and whistles to distract me. So yeah, let's get started. Let's make your very first animation ever. So um, right here you can see this is what we will be making. It's just a very simple uh, blinking Sophie. Sophie's from our web series, Demonic Creeps. So yeah, let's get started. Let's animate her. Alrighty guys, so as you can see here, um, I have my new animation pulled up here, so I'm just going to name it. I'm going to, you know, just do learn to animate, and then um, I'm going to create my scene. This is kind of the startup page you first see when you click on the application. Alright, so as you can see, we have our main window here. This is where all of the animation is going to show up. So this is our drawing window. As you can see, it's kind of a rectangle, so anything outside of that rectangle viewpoint will not be featured in your animation. So if you draw outside, um, you can see it now while you're making it, but you will not see it later. Which is uh, kind of great, you'll find out. So here are my settings. Um, you definitely want 1920 by 1080 because as of right now it is 2019. And in the 90s they used to do it um, a little more square. So I'm going to do 15 frames per second. That way my animation will be on twos instead of uh, the 24 frames per second, which like I said, is kind of outdated um, 90s. So you can also do 30 frames per second if you're a crazy person, but for starting out and even just for my personal preferences, I like 15 frames per second. Now over here you can see these are all your colors that you can choose from. So this is all for line work and coloring in your characters. I'm going to start out by making a um, just a temporary background right here. Um, I like to have this kind of pale lavender color in the background just because I think it complements all the characters very well. So this is just a pl placeholder. You can kind of see the edges are kind of messy, but like I said, anything outside this square will not be seen. As you can see, you can do um, the theater view, so it can just like get rid of all that messiness outside the rectangle. So what I did was I just extended the exposure. That way you can see the background the entire time. I believe there are 60 frames, which is one second of animation. And I'm just gonna rename this um, uh, Sophie. So I'm gonna be doing a Sophie layer. This will be our character for the scene. So then I just, you know, make sure she's vectorized and go ta-da. So starting on the first frame, let's build Sophie. She's very um, basic in her head. So she's actually just, um, her head's just one big circle. So I use the circle tool. I hold shift and I drag. See, if you don't hold shift, it won't drag properly. And here I'm just adjusting the size of the circle, like the line width. Ta-da, there's Sophie's head. Just a plain black circle to start off with. Uh, her body, of course, is a little more complicated. But that should be an easy character to start with. So I'm just going to be building my character with her usual things. You can also do an under sketch if you like, but I just really, I know Sophie very well by now. Her eyes are also just circle tools, so just, um, I didn't shift and drag. So what I'm doing here is I'm copy and pasting, putting on top, and then dragging over. That way her eyes are perfectly symmetrical and identical. Do her little triangle nose in the middle. And a smile. So what will really help is if you turn on the smoothing for your uh, pencil. So here I'm just adjusting the smoothing and that really helps make the curve perfect. It's just like a little helper. Doing her one ear. And then her hairline. She's super cute because she has these like aerial bangs and then um, Aurora curls at the bottom. Her shoulders. And so yeah, I'm just going to build my character. These are all vectorized lines, so that way you can highlight them and uh, move them around if you're not happy with them. So here I'm just trying to create her puff sleeves. Now, Sophie herself will not be moving. Today we are doing something very, very simple. If you guys are curious, I am using the Cintiq 22 HD tablet with, uh, without the touch screen. That's how I do all of my animations. Here we're doing some ruffles, some lace on her t-shirt and her arm. So you guys can see at the bottom it's disconnected. So if I try to color that, it will refuse to because it's leaking. And we'll get to that a little later. Here's a little collar 
we're just to embellish her and a little bow because we got to stay on brand. Feel free to add like any little details to your character's costumes. I think it really says a lot about them and it helps them stand out. So here I'm just drawing her curls. Again, with that smoothing on my brush, it really helps to make the perfect little curls. And we're gonna do some eyebrows. Very expressive. Finally, her eyelashes, which don't have to be identical. Alrighty, now we have our base character down. You can still see the lines of her head back there, but we'll get rid of those later. Don't worry about it. Up next. Alright, here's our cutter tool. Here we go. We're going to clean up those lines since we will be copying and pasting her main form over and over again to create consistency. So down below here, like I mentioned earlier, you're just gonna, you're just gonna, you know, connect those lines. So I connected those two at the bottom like a tube because they will be the same color. So when I fill it, it'll fill both arms instead of one. See, you won't see it, um, even though it looks very odd right now and her arms don't literally look like that. For today's sake, we're just gonna connect them like that underneath. Your audience will not see it. All right, so now I'm gonna extend exposure. It's really important to do this because you need to ex establish this character. Your audience is gonna look at her and if she starts moving right away, they can't, um, they can't just establish where she is in the scene and they're gonna get confused if the motion is right away. So you have to give your audience like a couple counts, a couple frames to just see her as she is, you know, recognize who she is and then you can go on to the movement. So let's make her blink. So first I'm gonna cut uh, the part of her eyeballs here. Um, this is just straight ahead animation. You can also do in betweening, but straight ahead is really easy right now. So as you can see, I'm clicking through the frames. This is uh, the next frame after the extended frames. So one, two, one, two. So you don't want to make her eyes close all the way immediately because um, it's a little shocking. So I'm actually going to make the blink down a little slower than the blink uh, coming back up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of Sophie. I'm going to copy and then paste her to the next frame. And then from here, we're gonna do another cut here. And you can see that I actually have um, the light box on so you can see the frames behind. This is really, really helpful because we can see what we did last. And from there we can build the next, um, the next visual. So see, you can see from three frames ago, the original one that is all the way open. The last one that we drew and then our current one right now is in deep black. All right, so we're gonna copy and paste her and this is when her eyes will be all the way closed. So I'm just gonna select all of it and just delete it. Her eyes closed will be an entirely different new sketched frame. Make sure to include her little eyelashes. Alrighty, and so on the close frame, you're actually gonna hold this for a couple frames, maybe just like two or three tops. Ta-da! And you can see with that um, little light box, you see the green and the red, that is our previous frames. That way we can keep track of what we've already done. So now we're gonna do the blank back up. So what I did was I copy and pasted um, an earlier frame and then I'm going to adjust it. Make sure you don't copy the frame itself, just the drawing that's on the frame. Cause if you do that, then you'll change the previous frame as well, which can be very helpful, but not what we wanna do right now. So this one, I'm just gonna do one frame on the way back up instead of the two that we took on the way down. That way um, you get the idea already that she's closing her eyes. So I just wanna flip right back up. So yeah. Here she is coming back up and I want her eyelashes to be kind of like they're dragging back upwards. Um, kind of kind of gives that feeling of um, her eyelashes fluttering a little bit. So now that her eyes are back open, we're gonna hold this for a couple more frames. So that way um, we'll establish, ta-da! And there we have Sophie blinking, check it out. Totally awesome. Oh, 
Alrighty, now I'm gonna have her blink twice, but I'm gonna mess around with the frames a little bit. You guys can get, um, you know, a little experimental here. You can try to, um, I'm gonna make her blink like really quick twice, like a little ding, ding, ding of her eyelashes. So I'm just uh, messing around. I'm keeping them in the same order, but I'm holding them for less time or I'm deleting frames. Um, that way it goes faster and it comes sooner. So yeah, just play around with this, have some fun. Again, this is like no pressure. We're just having fun here. We're just, you know, learning the very, very basics. So yeah, I'm just messing around with the frames, trying to make her blink faster. And I'm not gonna do anything outside of these um, 60 frames today. Alrighty, there she is, ding, ding. All right, so I'm just extending her, um, her eyes open at the end. There we go, ta-da! So now we have 60 seconds, we got three blinks, we got a character with a circular head, circular eyes, and embellished costume. So you don't always have to do this, but this uh, helps out sometimes to make another layer for coloring altogether. That way um, you don't have to interrupt your line work if you want to go back in and fix something. So what I do is I uh, copy and paste all of the line work, all the frames that I did. I put it on a brand new layer and then underneath that layer, which is exactly the same, I'm going to be doing color. So here I'm going to import my Sophie palette that I already have. It has all her skin tones. Be sure to please, please, please label all your colors. It'll save you a large headache later i swear so here i'm just importing um her skin tone also having a palette really helps with consistency that way her skin tone isn't like slightly pinker or slightly yellower in the next scene than it was in the previous scene so i always use sophie's palette uh, for sophie i have a separate pancake palette just to make things simpler please label what they are here i'm just doing her yellow hair and i'm going frame by frame to color these so yeah, just uh, click forward every frame and make sure you sift all the way through. Make sure you never forget. You know, sometimes it happens you forget a frame. Um, but yeah, do your best to, you know, double, triple check. So you'll see something interesting here with her costume. Uh, her costume never changes throughout this whole thing. Her hair, her costume, only her eyes change. So I'll show you actually how to copy and paste color from frame to frame. That way it's far less work. I'm choosing a cute pink for her top because I love the way the pink and the blonde come together and stands out from the purple background. And then let's do a blue bow tie today. Alrighty, so instead of doing all this work, blue bow tie frame by frame, let's just copy it. So I'm um, making sure to get nothing except for what I want. Uh, select it all, copy, and then come to the next frame and paste. And it's just that easy. Again, make sure you don't forget any frame. That way there's not uh, any weird uh, blank spaces or blinking, other than the blinking we want, of course. Alrighty. So here I'm gonna do a hair highlight. Now this is like a little advanced and um, it's really simple because her hair doesn't move, but it really adds a lot of dimension and uh, light to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take her hair color, um, add a new color, and this is gonna be slightly lighter than her hair tone. And yeah, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select it, make sure I get all of it and not her bangs. I accidentally selected her bangs, so unselect that by hitting shift and click. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy and you're gonna paste that frame by frame by frame. That way it's consistent and it doesn't uh, shimmer or move. Ta-da, now she's got a hair shine, adds a little something extra. You can add it to the rest of her curls as well. However, for today, I just did her bangs. Now let's make her come to life. We're gonna animate her eyes, color in those eyes. And then here she is. <gasps> Sophie blinking. Ta-da. All right, let's spruce up this background a little bit. I'm so over this temporary background. So I'm gonna import um, any picture I want. I'm just gonna go, um, you know, import, make sure I select the right one that I want. And then here she is, here's her background. This is her apartment at nighttime. So yeah, we'll just put that on top of the temporary layer. You can kind of see it back there. Um, and make sure it's behind her as well. That way she'll sit on top of it. Ta-da! 
there's Sophie blinking, fully colored in her apartment. If you guys have been following along, good job. I just want you guys to make sure you just keep going. Um, something is always gonna go wrong with animation, but you know, if you just try your best and you keep at it, and I know it's super tedious, but it's so satisfying to see Sophie blinking back at you. It looks like she's real in that space and you just created your very own cartoon. How cool is that? I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. Definitely let me know down below what you wanna learn about next. Do you want step two? Do you want, you know, maybe her waving or something shining or maybe, you know, pancake or something? So yes, definitely let me know. Shout out to our patrons on Patreon. We appreciate you guys so much. You make my dreams and this show a reality. So thank you so much to you guys. If you want to be a patron, um, go click over on our Patreon. We have some awesome, awesome rewards there. And shout out to the fan art of the week. Oh my gosh, I love this so, so, so much. I'm like, I'm crazy about this one because it's actually from my senior degree um, project, Lights Out. If you guys haven't seen it, it's my favorite project I've ever done because it showed me how far I could push myself and what I'm capable of. So go click on that over there if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped. I hope I, um, I described it well enough because it's really just second nature for me. Um, so it's kind of hard to just describe what I'm doing and let me know what you want to learn about next time. And don't forget to stay inspired. Bye.